Hello, my name is Father Jonathan at St. John the Baptist Orthodox Church in Warren, Ohio. Today I'd like to briefly explain the significance of the Orthodox Church building or the Orthodox Temple. The Orthodox Temple is composed of three parts, the narthex or vestibule, the nave, the main part of the church, and the sanctuary, which contains the altar and where most of the liturgical action takes place. The Orthodox Temple is oriented toward the east, so when you come into the church through the narthex or vestibule, that is the west side of the church. And then you progress through the church to the east side, which is the direction of the resurrection, the raising of Christ. And that is where the altar and the table of preparation is located. So right now I'd like to explain just briefly the significance of the narthex or vestibule. This is the boundary between the world and the church. This is the part of the church that you first come into as you approach the main part of the church. So when you come into the narthex or the vestibule, you will find icons, you will find candle stands. There might be some service folders there, various hymns and prayers of the services that are going to be prayed at that time. So it is a place of introduction. It's also a place liturgically, for instance, during the service of holy baptism, where a person begins with the exorcisms and by facing west, literally, facing away from the east, away from Christ, the person to enter into the church renounces Satan, renounces the influence of evil in the world, and then physically turns toward the east and enters into the church proper. So you come through the narthex and the vestibule first. As you can see, the very temple or church itself is an icon. It is a picture or an image of our journey, our progress from the world, from sin and from the power of Satan to the kingdom of God. The icon screen, the iconostasis, is a theological statement of the purpose of our worship in the church and the divine liturgy. To my right and to the worshiper's left, to the left of the holy doors, we have the icon of the first coming of Christ in the flesh. This is the Theotokos, the Blessed Virgin Mary, holding Christ, having given birth to the Savior of the world. To my left, to the worshiper's right, and to the right of the holy doors is an icon of Christ returning in glory. So the action of the divine liturgy in our worship in the church take, takes place between the first coming of Christ and his second coming in glory. It is a constant reminder of our life and the necessity of worship in the church. These are the holy doors. They are the central doors which are opened during the services of the church. On the holy doors you frequently see icons of the four gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You also find icons of the Virgin Mary and the Archangel Gabriel. When Gabriel announced to Mary that she would be the mother of the Son of God. There are two other doors in the icon screen. The door to this side, which we frequently refer to as a deacon's door, is opened and closed during the services of the church so that those who are leading the worship of the church can enter and exit the sanctuary and say prayers in front of the icon screen. As you can see on the rest of the iconostasis, we have many icons of the saints, also of various feast days within the church here, so that the iconostasis is a complete theological vision and revelation of the kingdom of God, drawing us to that eternal goal for which we are worshiping God. I have now entered into what we call the sanctuary. The sanctuary is the place of the altar. The altar is the table on which the body and blood of Christ are presented to the people of God for Holy Communion. There are a couple other items on the altar table that are usually always there. One is the Gospel book, and the Gospel book is covering the cloth on which the chalice and the discos are placed for Holy Communion, and this cloth is called the Antimensium. There's also a hand cross used for blessing, and there's a tabernacle toward the back of the altar which contains, most notably, the reserved gifts, the body and blood of Christ, which are taken to those who cannot come to church for Holy Communion, for instance, in their homes or in nursing homes. The second main 
table within the sanctuary is the table of preparation. This is where the bread and the wine are prepared prior to the divine liturgy and then during the great entrance of the liturgy are transported from the table of preparation to the altar and placed there for Holy Communion. The sanctuary is the place of illumination where the people of God are drawn and the kingdom of God is manifested in its full glory in our midst. It is the fulfillment and the culmination of our worship here on earth. The Antimension is the cloth on which the discos and the chalice are placed for Holy Communion. Liturgy cannot be served without the Antimension. The Antimension has relics of the saints sewn into it. It is also signed by the bishop, who is the head pastor, the chief pastor of the parish. These contain the holy relics of Probus, Tericus, and Andronicus, who were martyred on October the 12th in the year 304. This is the sponge used for cleaning off various particles on the Antimension, and frequently there is an icon or an engraving of the taking down of Christ from the cross. It is the presentation of the body and blood of Christ for the people of God in Holy Communion. And this is what is done on the Antimension. The table of preparation is where we prepare the bread and wine prior to the Divine Liturgy for Holy Communion. The table of preparation is always indicated with the icon of the birth or nativity of Christ because just as Christ was born of the Virgin Mary, now He is literally coming to dwell in our midst in His body and blood in Holy Communion. Here is the discos or plate for the bread. This is the chalice or cup in which is placed the wine, uh, which will become the blood of Christ. We have the spoon for the distribution of Holy Communion to the faithful, the spear which is used for cutting up the bread to prepare it for Holy Communion. This is known as the star, which is placed on the discos above the bread, basically to keep the coverings from touching it and disturbing it. We place the coverings on the discos and the chalice, and finally we cover everything with what is known as an air. During the great entrance, these gifts are then transported from the table of preparation to the holy altar for Holy Communion. Lord, come ten and touch Chicago and the diocese of the Midwest. Lord God, remember them in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. The president of this country, those serving in civil authority, and those serving in the armed forces, especially those serving in places of unrest in this world. Lord God, grant them good thoughts concerning his people, that they may create a lasting peace. Lord God, remember them in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. The founders, Benefactors and beautifiers of this holy temple. Lord God, remember them in this kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Those who love us and those who hate us. Lord God, remember them in this kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Good Lord, Orthodox Christians. Lord God, remember you in this kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. May the Lord God remember your priesthood in his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and 